So for steaming squash, I generally like to stay away from anything in the acorn family. They will become watery and the flavor will be watered down. So the ones that I like to steam would be anything in the buttercup or kabocha family or a hubbard or a butternut. So for, we'll be doing a butternut today. And I find that the hardest part to cut through is where the stem is. And so I like to eliminate the stem right off the bat. And you want to hold it really firm so that it doesn't roll around. And you can hold it against your body and then you can get some leverage against it. If, you, if you've got it out like this, then it's going to be wobbling and you're more likely to cut yourself. So once that is taken off, then it's easy to cut it in the other direction. Presto! We want to make sure that we get smallish pieces that will fit into the steamer. Some squashes have seeds that you can eat, like a pumpkin seed. Those would be acorn or delicata or spaghetti squash. But I find that butternut and especially the seeds of kabocha or buttercup or hubbard have a thicker coating and they're very fibrous and not pleasant to eat. So once the pieces are seeded, then you just stack them in the steamer. You want the steam to be able to reach all of the pieces. You don't want the ones on the bottom getting cooked more than the ones on the top. And then we put water in. You just want to come up to the bottom of the steamer so that the squash isn't actually in the water. Then we turn it up to high. And wait. We're going to check to see how our squash are doing. The fork goes in really easily on the top, but towards the skin, it's not quite reaching it. So we're going to give them just a little bit longer. And the fork goes in really easily all the way down, so they are done. And that was almost out of water, so always make sure you have enough water in your pot. And then we'll just let them cool, and then we can puree. If I know that I'm going to be steaming and pureeing squash, I will generally do a whole bunch of it at one time. Because once I'm set up to do this, I would just assume get a whole bunch of it done in, a, in the freezer. So we have three ways to puree pumpkin or squash. First, I'm going to use the food processor. It's quick and a lot of people have them in their house. You just scoop the cooked flesh off of the skin. If you get a little bit of skin in there, it isn't really going to matter. Okay. It's nice and smooth and creamy and ready to use in your dish. The next tool that we're going to use is an immersion blender, which a lot of people also have in their house. Or you can also use a regular blender. You'll know that you're done when generally it's smooth. It should look kind of like pudding. My favorite method is this old-fashioned gizmo called a food mill. The way that it works is that it has a steel plate in the bottom, and then you turn this crank, and it pushes the whatever you're pureeing through that screen. The advantage is that it just takes out any seeds or skin or any other little um, inedible fibers. So those little bits of skin will actually stay on this side of the screen. The disadvantage, well, or the advantage, depending on how you look at it, is that it's exercise. So then you just crank and crank and crank. So it's kind of soothing, really. And there we go. So once you have your squash or pumpkin pureed, you're ready to make a pie. This is basically the stage that you're at when you open a can.